but also just to bring attention to North Korea and and make it so that people aren't living under this threat of possibility that that could be a real thing and that alarm could come through your phone and know that you now have around 18 minutes to find good cover or say your final goodbyes. Well, it's so scary because it's such an erratic and dangerous regime. I mean, it's when you see what that guy has already done yeah. and the people he's executed, including family members. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, quite a maniac and a legitimate dictator in the old world kind of sense. It's very strange that he's still, I mean, you, you think in the age that we live in, that would be very difficult to control an entire country the way that they've controlled North Korea for so long yeah. since the Korean War, but yeah. they still can do it. They are, and I think that while it may be easy to write him off as a maniac, there has also been a very um, consistent, there, there, there has been a consistency throughout the different regimes of the Kim family um, as they've developed this nuclear and nuclear missile capability in that they are doing it to um, protect themselves against regime change war, essentially. And they have said it directly. Um, you know, our, our U.S. foreign policy experts point that out, that this is the reason why they're developing this capability, because they have seen how, if you look at Libya, for example, mm -hmm. when Gaddafi was looking at, you know, building and acquiring nuclear weapons, um, he was doing so also as, you know, to protect himself and his regime. And then he made a deal with the United States saying, okay, give up your nuclear weapons uh, program and we're not going to, you know, don't worry about it. We're not going to touch you. And then, of course, we know what happened. The U.S. led this regime change war, toppled Gaddafi and, and North Korea says, okay, so that's what you do when you have, you know, a, a leader of a country without nuclear weapons to protect themselves. Well, it's also the consequences of that regime change is a failed state. And it's more terrifying than even when Gaddafi was exactly. in control. I mean, I'm sure you've seen the uh, the slave trade videos it's from horrifying. there. It's insane. It is horrifying that, that this is happening. You're watching it on YouTube, yeah. Right, in, in our lifetime. Yeah. And that this, this, um, this failed state has happened as a direct result of our policy there, our failed continuation of these regime change wars that we carry out in different parts of the world. Right. It's almost like we don't learn from our mistakes. Uh, I, and I don't know what the, the proper solution is. I mean, do you keep someone like Saddam Hussein or someone like Muammar Gaddafi? Do you keep them in power and let them still be horrific dictators and evil maniacs? Or do you step in and cause more damage? I mean, it's, it's almost a lose-lose situation. It, it's, yeah, it's not a good situation, but it's where we as the United States need to um, be pragmatic about the situation and the fact that we live in the world that exists, not some kind of idealistic world that is a fantasy. And then think about how um, counterproductive our acting as the world's police has been, has proven to be in example after example after example. So yes, there are bad people in the world who do horrifying things, but is it really in our place to go in and take action and say, okay, we're going to remove this person and then we're going to put this person in and this is how you're going to govern this country and, and really acting, uh, acting as the world's police. And therefore, and then as a result, as we've seen in Iraq and Libya and now in Syria, the people in those countries are far worse off than they were before. We have, and, and it's counterproductive for our interests as well, because we have Al Qaeda, ISIS, and these other terrorist groups who have been strengthened directly as a result of our policies in these countries. When you talk to people in the intelligence community, what, what do they think? I mean, either off the record or on the record, what do they think is the solution for situations like that? Many of them are uh, hesitant to, to share their own opinion because especially in the intelligence community, um, their job is to report on what they're hearing, what they're gathering, the intel that they're bringing in and so on and so forth. Uh, but you know, wh when, you, when you talk with folks who operate in that space, um, the ones who are honest and not trying to further a specific agenda or cover somebody else's bad decisions 
um, there is a recognition of how our policies of, of the past decades have failed people in those countries and us. They've failed, but have they failed as bad or equally bad as if we did if we did nothing? Like worse, what, worse for sure. We yes, yeah, yes. Mm. Worse for the so people in those countries. Worse for the people in those countries, as well as 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 we should be thinking about before we take any of these actions. Is how does this best serve the interests of our people yeah. in this country? And these actions have been counter to those best interests. And so your, your question about, so yeah. why do we keep doing this? Right. Um, I think there are a lot of different things that go into that and to drive that. You know, you have the military industrial complex that benefits and makes a lot of money off of our being in a, in a perpetual state of war. You have a lot of other countries like Saudi Arabia, for example, who dump a lot of money into the United States uh, and, and um, kind of try to use our U.S. military as their force to go in and, and do certain things in the Middle East that's more beneficial to Saudi Arabia. Uh, we see this happening in Yemen right now. Yet another example. Interventionist war, jumping in there. We're uh, supporting Saudi Arabia and their coalition in this war that's created the worst humanitarian disaster in the world. They just bombed a school bus and killed 40 kids a couple of weeks ago in Yemen. Yemeni civilians bombed weddings in Yemen. And yet uh, our U.S. government is not saying, hey, we're, we're going to stop and yank all of our support for Saudi Arabia. They're, they're continuing to do it. 